previously in Phenero. Kidron was a valley that was between Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. It was the valley there in the middle. And it was the receptacle of all manner of filthiness. Second Chronicles 29, 16. The Bible says the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all uncleanliness. And the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook Kidron. So do you see what is in the brook Kidron? All manner of uncleanliness in temples is thrown there. When the rains fall from Olives to Jerusalem, the waters used to go and settle in the valley Kidron. So in Kidron, there is no moving waters. If these waters were washing and cleaning mountains, sloping down, all filth would come being washed by water. And every filthy thing would settle in the same place, the valley of Kidron. It was like a dustbin. Kidron also was a grave of common people. The literal word brook is valley. Kidron is darkness. It's the valley of darkness. Israel has been won over by a boy who doesn't even know how to fight. David is in pain. He's a man in sorrow. Now I want you to envision that place where your own son wants to make himself king. The same boy you had mercy on return. He's the same boy who killed your son. The Bible says, and the king also himself passed over the brook of Kidron. The Bible did not say the king passed over the brook Kidron. No, the king also himself passed over the brook Kidron. It was not a place a king was expected to pass. It was not the usual place a king should pass. But the king passed there. David crossed that brook in tears. He was a king. He could not believe that he had been belittled to that level. The Bible says in those days there was a man called Ahithophel. And his counsel was as good as the word of God. When Ahithophel spoke, it was God speaking. And then he wakes up too. And a man who has counseled him for years is left. In fact, that's why he wrote Psalms 55. Thousands of years later, Jesus is born, preaches the gospel, tells his disciples, I'm about to go. And in John 18, the Bible says when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Also, the Son of God goes through the same thing that David went through. David is betrayed by Ahithophel and his son Absalom and Israel. Here, Christ is betrayed by Judas and Israel. Similar setting. I'm trying to tell you, there are things you will go through, but how you go through matters. Let me show you a mystery. In the time when David is crossing the brook Kidron, it's amazing that the Bible gives us three names. The first name is Etai, and the Hebrew word Etai means with. Abiathar, the father which is great. And Zadok means he that imputes righteousness. <laughs> Woo, these three figures of men around a man going through the brook of Kidron is actually saying, the great father with me imputes righteousness on me. I know that my son is judging, but there is a God that imputes righteousness on me. You know, it's one thing to go through things, but it's another when you know that the Lord is with. And with David's experience, you would think the Lord had left him. But David was not thinking like that. In fact, that's why he writes the Psalms 23. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. This is the man going through the brook Kidron. He says, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down besides green pastures. He leadeth me besides still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Did you get it? That's good one right there. Why? Because the graveyard is everywhere. Darkness is everywhere. All filthiness is everywhere. All uncleanliness is everywhere. All failure is everywhere. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil for your rod and stuff. They what? They come from this is the attitude of a man after God's own heart. He says, I'm weeping for my son, but inside there, I'm not a scared folk. Inside there is a very strong man who knows who my shepherd is and how that I cannot want. He's going through that, but he's saying, thou prepares the table. Woo! In the midst of my enemies, look at that attitude. Yes, I'm going through these things, but thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. That's a man going through the brook of Kitron. Come on. 
What am I trying to say? When you become born again, no circumstance should cause you to drive your eyes from what God is doing to what is happening at that present hour. It doesn't matter what you go through. Fix your eyes on what God is doing. That confidence, the Bible says, cast not away thine confidence. Are you hearing me? That, that place where it doesn't matter what you're going through, but something still tells you, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. He's anointing me. He's increasing me. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. God is looking for such attitude. That place where you can go through stuff, and people come and pity you and you tell them darling don't pity you don't know what God is adding on my head you don't know how much oil is being poured out on me Paul says for when I am weak then I that is why when you go through trouble before you all oh, just get in the side and start to harakabakatanabaye sobrokotoba digint kalekebrosotolaba Dig it inside, it to robo say. And when you feel your deep, go deeper. Randa rezeke has sare reke bro. Sika prakata tere. For thou art with me. Reke te sire remando sora kaya Sorrow is a might happen thing. Joy is a sure thing. Read the scripture. He said, weeping may endure for a night. He says, but joy cometh. In the morning, it comes. Woo! The Bible says he has called us to glory and virtue. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Praise God. Let me tell you, you're not going to fail. And for more of this, join us every Thursday at Umalugogo from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Finero, make manifest.